Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to a new video. This is gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna look at my friend, I do consider him a friend, Joe Benitez on Lady Mechanica. This is just a little teaser of some of the work that he's got upcoming, and this is the first series, but um, the architects are listed as you want to know. So uh, anyway, um, this is beautiful stuff. I'm really excited to look through this. When the files were opening, I definitely saw some stuff that didn't look like Joe in here. So it is possible that maybe there's uh, some short stories or something also included in this. But we're going to we're gonna focus mainly on Joe's stuff or what I eyeball as Joe's stuff. And again, I hope everyone's doing well, staying uh, sane, and uh, having some fun watching these videos. This is going to be really awesome. Joe's attention to detail has always been nuts. And uh, this is no exception. Let's go into Carlos mode. And uh, honorable mention to Farben. That is so nice, man. Dude, these three pages are just killer. But anyway, I, I can focus on that all day. But yeah, so Lady Mechanica. It's a steampunk-inspired uh, kind of fantasy book. And uh, Joe brings it. It's very, very cool. And, uh, you know, it was interesting because Chris Bocklow and I did steampunk. uh in 2000, I think, 2001, 2002, 2003, somewhere around there. It's a couple of years. But, um, you know, we actually got some flack from steampunk people saying that it wasn't steampunk enough or something like that. But I definitely think that Joe actually embraces, like, uh, visually what steampunk sort of ended up um, representing more. I don't think Baklo was necessarily trying to... Uh, capture this sort of like leather and bronzy metal kind of thing. But anyway, we haven't got to the real pages yet. So these will be a little out of order. But um, anyway, so we'll move through some of this stuff fast. Joe is great with mech. I mean, he's always had this really great... Uh, of all the Top Cow artists, I always felt that Joe had probably the, the most unique style. Um, and always, like his people always were unique to his own sort of aesthetic and uh, his his mech and stuff like that was always just top notch, and he's he's quite a character himself. If you've ever met Joe, he's tamed he's tamed himself a bit over the last few years. And I'll have links to all of Joe's uh, social media in the description box. He does these great um, kind of colored sketches on paper right now. This doesn't look like it's inked, which is quite possible. Um, I think it would be very very difficult for him to self publish pencil, uh, hire an inker. Oh man, that is so awesome. Um, it could get pricey, but this stuff may be inked and maybe I'm just wrong, but it looks like pencils turn to ink and you know, it looks fine. It's got a, like a gritty feel. This is a great panel. Let me, uh, make this a little smaller so it's not so intrusive, but you can still see it, man. This is awesome. Look at that. She's so cute. This is great too. Look at that is a little cyber clown. But uh, yeah, I have the trade of this. I also have a, a pretty nice sketchbook that Joe gave me um, that was probably done around the time that he started this series. That is so kick-ass. Oh, that's cool. But yeah, this should be a lot of fun. Man, great gun. Today we've had a really interesting variety of stuff. If you haven't checked out the Megalia video, I highly recommend it. It's it's really, really good. His stuff is great. And uh, we'll definitely revisit uh, Carlos again because I'm going to ram him down your throat until you all love it. <laughs> You're going to love it. Or I'm going to make you love it. She says, I too will make you love it. This is cool. I'm curious to see if it all is shot from pencil as the book rolls along. That's kind of Star Wars-y. Star wars and It's cool. They're all looking sexy here. Now this almost, no. Nice detail though, man. I've inked a few of Joe's pages. They're pretty nuts. You're definitely going to dig in and, and he's going to put you to work. So uh, that is what it is. Look at this guy. He's ready to go to Eyes Wide Shut and go to the private private uh, club <laughs> oh yeah okay that's a cool panel <laughs> the monkey do you want to touch my monkey <laughs> oh man that's nice Yeah, this is cool. Yep. 
I, I, I love that Joe has committed to this book for as long as he has. I mean, he's been working on it for about a ten, about 10 years now. That's a great, great shot. Man, that is awesome. This is cool, too. I love the, her position in this thing. But, yeah, he's um he's he's been working on this since 2010. That's what this uh, chunk of art is from around that era. So may, he might have started it the year before. But, yeah, it's very, very cool. This is nice. I'm nearly sure the colors, well, you know, don't let me guess on this, because uh, I the colors on the series that I was looking at was someone else. So, actually, I think this is Steigerwald. But Beth Sotelo colored the most recent stuff, I'm nearly sure. This is nice. Really, really cool costuming. It's interesting knowing Joe, because I would have never have pegged him as someone into this... Um, type of genre i guess you would call it it makes sense though too because it's like every every tone every stone's kind of been unturned so to put your foot in this in in kind of normal comic books is you know there's not a lot of books that had this going on you know we've seen a million x-men ripoffs and the tough sort of paramilitary team books and all that. And they're fun. I mean, you know, done well, they're always great. But, uh, yeah, I think Joe wanted to do something that was at least a little bit uh, unique to, like, superhero comics. Where call it. That's great. It's all speculation on my part, but I'm just saying. Man, that's cool. So someone had asked me about uh, Top Cow in one of the other videos, and I never visited their studio, to be clear, but essentially what they were asking me was, did Finch and Mike Turner work around um, Mark? They did, for sure. The other two artists that you mentioned, which was um, Stefan Stepan Sed Sedvik and uh, someone else, they probably didn't. They could have. I would assume that, that the one guy uh, probably just works from his house. Top Cow is a studio. I don't think is an actual location anymore and hasn't been for a while. Um, but at one point, Homage Studios was Top Cow and Wildstorm, and they were together. And if I'm not mistaken, they were actually in San Diego. And then um, Top Cow went up to L.A., and Wildstorm moved to La Jolla in San Diego, which was maybe 20 minutes from where the other studio was. So at that point, Turner, Benitez, Finch, and everyone else that came in that worked at Top Cow would have been in L.A. But that probably only went, um, oh man, I'd only be guessing. I, I, I don't think that there's been an actual Top Cow studio in-house for a, a while, but I don't know that for a fact. This is the guy that was in that other page. The the one that I was obsessing on in the beginning of the video. See, this doesn't really look like Joe to me. It kind of does and kind of doesn't. It's a little hard to tell. If if he's using that Montiel artist, oh, this, I guess, kind of looks like Joe. Um, it's hard to say what they were blending in together. Oh, that's cool. Man, that is awesome. It's funny because I'm getting a little bit of like a Nick Manabat vibe from this stuff, but it's just a coincidence. But if you ever saw um, the original, original Cybernary um, uh, mini series that was the flip book with Deathblow, Nick would do some really, really gritty, dark stuff. He was so great. Um, and he passed away at like 24 years old from cancer, just like got sick and was like gone. It was very, very sad. And uh, yeah, that's cool. This looks like Roquefort. Kenneth Roquefort. I'm gonna I'm going on a limb. Yeah, it is. I actually have two Kenneth Roquefort originals that he sent to Wildstorm as samples. And it was like he sent a sample pack, but then he sent two pieces. Or maybe they were for a contest. And I still have them somewhere to this day. And uh it's funny because it's like he was trying to break in at that point. And look at him now. He's and destroying it and it's funny he's he's still got some of the aesthetic that he had in his early work he uses a lot of shapes the stuff is very very detailed and intricate and he's always put these like kind of um like geometric sort of 
things in his work. Like, just everything is, like, kind of cornered. It's very, very cool, but unique him. And his color palette was very wild, too. So it's funny how... I had mentioned that in another video that like some of your some of your early things that you do they really stay with you throughout your whole career and they can be assets or sometimes detriments in his case they're assets but yeah like and you'll see it with artists that don't take care of their work the bad habits come back and they can literally regress to look like kind of like what they did when they were first drawing it's really really weird but I've seen I've seen that happen and you go oh man like this is crazy this dude's been drawing for 20 some odd years and his work is starting to look like it did when he was two years into his pro career what's going on but that's the stuff that's in your hard drive that's like sketched in hard and then you've got all this more transient sort of stuff that if you don't you know uh again nurture it will start to fade on you man that's a great page a lot of panels but you know everyone's different so who knows What did I say? If you ever work for Top Cow, what do you need to know? Wings. It's mandatory. That's cool, though. This is unique. Again, Joe's got some really, really interesting influences that make his stuff... Uh... It's cool. I actually kind of like how unrefined this is. You know? It looks cool. That's yeah, crazy. We'll move through some of these. There's a lot of pages, so let's kind of hustle to hustle to the good stuff. This is nice. Really cool, solid, like, little figures. This is such a great size figure for people that draw well. They always end up looking. I think uh, there's, like, a dyn 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 dynism to these size figures for people. And uh, it's interesting. Sometimes they'll draw the same figure bigger, and it just doesn't have the same flair. It's a real, it's a real interesting thing, which is why a lot of artists do their thumbnails smaller. Well, I'm not, I'm, that's not the reason, but um, it can hopefully keep some of that kinetic energy into your bigger shots. But when you have this much real estate to fill up with detail, um, people sometimes overwork it and it gets stiff for a little too. It's interesting. It's so loose. Sometimes in Joe's stuff, I do see a tiny, tiny bit of Campbell. They were pretty good friends at Homage Studios. And uh, at the time, they were probably two of the more more similar. Like, they were, you know, because Campbell would always get compared to, like, oh, you must really be into, like, manga and anime and stuff like that. And I think um, Joe had that, too. It's funny because if you look in some of the issues of Gen 13, Campbell for years would throw Joe into his comic books. It was always really funny. He was a pirate in the Gen 13. I think it was issue 5. Issue 3 or 5. But he's one of the buccaneers. That's cool. Yeah, this is very different than any of the other stuff that we've looked at. And again, the looseness of it is just pretty crazy, you know? This is all very, um, just like, scribbly, almost like breakdowns. But if you draw well enough, it can, it can hold its own. It's colored well, too, but she's cool. Awesome. That's cool too. That's really, really neat. He's coming for trouble. Oh, that's cool. Bam. That's cool with her holding the gun like that too. This is a great, great shot right here. Whoa. He's got the like cybernetic steampunk legs. Uh, 
Oh, the one um, in Love, Death, Robots. The, the guy that builds this, the animatronics. That was pretty crazy. <laughs> if you've seen it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Oh, man, that's cool. Are they in space? Or are they just in a building that's high up? Look like they're in space. <laughs> it's pretty good with these dresses, man. It's crazy how loose it is, but this is nice. I like how he sort of staggers this. Double page spread. This would look really, really neat in a um, artist edition type thing. I mean, uh, or even like a director's cut where it's black and white or shot from the pencils. I'd be down to see that. It would be pretty cool. Isn't sure who this is. This could be Joe, but oh, Francesco. Oh yeah, he's good. It's funny because I discovered his work right around the time of Kenneth Roquefort. What a weird coincidence! But it's it and and they're both super designy. Like like Francesco always uses a lot of shapes in his work too. That's very funny. It's a weird coincidence. A really, really cool gun. Man, it's colored great, too. Love what the guy the Pretty sure this is stuck. We'll check in a second. I think it'll be signed. Yeah, that's awesome. This is cool, too. Look at this. This texture in here. Man, that's nice. Look at that, dude. And then this. This. This is the texture maniac. Yeah, this is Peter. Peter's great. Very nice guy, too. I've only met him once or twice, but he seems like a really, really genuinely cool dude. This is nice. It's colored a little different. It's funny. There we go. Man, that's crazy. Yeah, that's really, really cool. Dang. Was it Bioshock that had the weird sort of, it was like future America or something? Was that Bioshock? That was such a crazy game. I watched a walkthrough of it. Uh, you know what? I might actually have it too. I think, no, you know what I did? I bought it. I never played it. I watched a walkthrough while I was working. And I was, I think I had bought it, but I didn't have time to play it. I can't think of what it was called though. Bioshock. Who's this? MG. And this is Beth's colors. I don't know this comic. So 2012. That's cool. Man. This is really, really interesting. I would be curious to see more of the series, is, uh, like the other series, to see uh, how he continued the art. If it evolved or. A nice panel. A little fine art fart. <laughs> oh man. It's funny in Steampunk there was a scene like this. It's not exactly, but Dr. Absinthe was up to no good. I wish that they would actually do a digital version of it. It's funny because uh Steampunk just shot from the original files would look so good. If you find a digital copy of it, it's just someone ripped it from the comic. And they either they probably photographed it or scanned it, but it looks kind of shitty. And they're pretty muddy. <clears throat> I've got them somewhere, but yeah, it would be nice to see a reproduction. The 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 printed comics and and the printed trade paperbacks look fine, but just the the bootleg copy is not so great. A lot of the old Wildstorm stuff is like that. You can kind of find it online, but they're shitty scans. 
I own it all, but sometimes just the convenience of a digital scan is nice. I'm not uh, suggesting that you do that, but this is cool. Man, it's really nice, actually. Damn, that's great. This is cool, man. I'm going to take a sip of beverage. All right. Oh, man, that's awesome. Is it Bioshock Infinite? Was that what it was called? No, it can't be. That's a cool little piece of tech. Oh, look at the wolf boy. The little bearded boy. Look at him. She's cool. Yeah. This is our team. <laughs> it was funny. Small. This looked like hatching. Like when I saw it from there, I thought it was like a... It looked like a Clip Studio. Those like crosshatch brushes. Which... I was kind of warn people be be judicious with that. It's a little bit of a cheesy effect, but I know people use it. So, but anyway, pick your spots would be my recommendation. Buttering up your background with it all the time is kind of eh. like no, Rich, don't say that. You're taking away my technique. <laughs> <laughs> Got to come up with some original shit, man. Pre-made brushes ain't gonna get you there, babies. <laughs> Make some custom brushes. I would recommend that. You know, if you're gonna use a hatch brush, throw down some hatches, scan it, and create a brush. It's not that hard. In fact, you should know how to do it if you're gonna be a digital artist. Don't be don't be that artist who's lazy, because that's the problem with digital tools. Fabok. Sulfa. Yeah, you still got to put in the effort if you're going to be digital. In fact, maybe in some ways more. To separate yourself from the pack. Meow. Flat teeth. You got to curve that shit. I'll forgive you, Joe. <laughs> this looks cool, though. Yeah, your teeth set in an arc. So when you do stuff like this, it's needs to. It's a fairly straight on shot, so it does even out a little bit. But it would be a little ju bit juxtaposed more. This is nice, man. These little dudes are creepy. Oh man, this one guy is awesome. <laughs> It's got a little bit of a Windsor McKay vibe to me. If people know who that is. Oh, that's cool. Really nice colors. Man. Man, that is some beautiful, beautiful coloring. Cool. It's kind of similar. Like he did a similar shot. At one of those other issues. It's not exactly the same, but that's cool. Lady, Lady Mechanica. This would be a time-consuming book to draw with all these, this tech and stuff. Lots of pouches and buckles too. You can save time on stuff like this, though. And Joe's, Joe's such an accomplished penciler. He could draw his ass off. I'm sure he knocks out some of this stuff pretty damn fast. This is very, very cool. Haunted City. like that bottom panel. That is cool. 
he's crying. He choked on his liquor and now he's all weepy. <laughs> That's interesting. I feel like I've seen that before. That's Fabok. 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 Pants makes it look like her butt's weird. That is pretty cool. These background textures that uh, I'm assuming Steigerwall drops in really actually add quite a nice um, feel to the pages and, and kind of fill them out. This almost looks like money scanned. I don't think it is though, but it almost could be like the, it looks like the binding of a book. You know, like the, when you open up a book and sometimes the inside dust jacket's got like weird textures. This could even be a fingerprint or something. Mont, you Steigerwald. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I wonder if it's a fingerprint. That's really weird. I don't know. I don't know what it is. This is nice. It's, it totally reminds me of something Campbell would draw. I know, Kitty. You love Jeff J. Scott Campbell. Do you call him Scott or do you call him Jeff? She calls him Scott also. I call him Jeff. I'm old school. This is that's how he knows you're an old friend. <laughs> I like the shoulder pads. Those are nice. That's cool. Man, it really has nice, there's a nice sense of depth. The coloring really, really pushes it along, but it's a great angle that he put the gun at. These pouches look really, really great too. But man, the way that um, this is colored really adds a beautiful, beautiful um, sense of, I don't know if I call it realism, but uh, like like form and, and like uh, it just feels very tangible. This is great too. Look at this on here. It's like when you see it up close, you see the technique more, but all that subtle stuff, it really actually kind of makes it look like that leathery f texture. It's pretty cool. This is great, too. Some brilliant, brilliant work. Man, it's nice. The pixels sort of help it along, but I know that he's, he looks like he's got some sort of texture in there. That's cool. He's a little dirty. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh man. Oh, that's really cool. Man, comics are so fun. Okay. Lady Mechanica. That's Ali Garza, I bet. Yeah. Alejandro. I know him. He's really good, too. They needed to color her gun with all that brass stuff. Such a cool outfit. The belt looks neat. That gun, man, it's so cool. Oh, man, I didn't even noticed that. That's great. Damn, look at Ollie go. Wow. Dude, that's sick. Man, he brought it. That's really, really neat. Fucking A. Ollie doesn't like to draw backgrounds sometimes. It's okay, though. We love Ollie regardless, but yeah. He prefers to draw the ladies. <laughs> this is cool. This looks like Joe. Look at that signature. That is wild. All right. Oh, oh man, I like I like the colors on this. All that kind of murky gray and sort of. I don't know if it's like like a soft umber color, but then this red comes in. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, nice palette. That's cool. Oh, there we go. Man, that's awesome. Yeah, they really do a good job with this. The way that Joe penciled it, too. A foreboding... Institution. Whoa. 
Oh man, look at this. Weapons and gear. She's in her granny, granny gear. <laughs> Old fashioned underwear. This is cool. It's an interesting page. At times, the stuff has a little bit of a Sam Keith feel. That last page sort of did. It's probably just a quink quinky dink. It's like stuff like this doesn't look like Sam Keith at all. I'll point it out if I see another one that's got a little bit of the Keith vibe. I'll move through these a little faster. There's a Cheech and Chong meme for this face <laughs> somewhere out there. If you don't follow Cheech and Chong on Instagram, I'd recommend it. They're, they post some pretty funny stuff. You don't even have to be in the weed. <laughs> oh, right, what do we got? Down, 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 down. Dang. See, this has a little bit of a Sam Keith vibe to it, this page. Like this, a little bit of this, some of this. Not that so much, but who's that? Eric Battle. I remember that name. It's funny. This dude was pretty good. He kind of, he sort of had a gritty style. He had some books. Man, that's nuts. Wow, that's cool. This is great, too. Yeah, that's that's a really nice spread, man. Uh-oh. She looks like trouble. The, the red head with the eye patch and, and flared sort of German-esque pants and gear. It's a classic, classic villain. Bam! That's cool. Colors are nice, too. At times, she has a little bit of an X-23 vibe to me. This is a cool panel. Man, it looks neat. He might have done that in kind of washy ink. It's hard for me to tell. It could be pencil. They keep this stuff pretty tight. I want, I'd be curious of how much they had to clean up those pencils to get it to look finished. That's cool. Signed. Oh yeah. That's a kind of nice little statue. This figure is good. What is it, Kitty? You like the sketchbook stuff? Yeah, okay. What else did you want to tell me? You're hungry? <laughs> it's like, get off YouTube. Two videos a day is too much. This guy's cool, man. I know, Kitty. It's all right. Oh, there's a Campbell. The Campbell. Campbell, well, he puts a little splattery, sp splattery do. Hey, Kitty, seriously now. Yeah, he, Campbell, he he likes to put a little splatter on his drawings. Works well though. Gives it a little bit of uh, a little zip. <laughs> All right. That's cool. A little bit of a different outfit for her. I don't remember the lacy stuff there. This is like Gollum, like a little like female Gollum or something. I don't know if it's female, but <laughs> I 
just kick that thing right in the head and be done. <laughs> Bam! Go to sleep, little friend. It's time for night night. Pipe will work too, but she had a gun. I thought it was a pipe for a second. There was a lot of pipe hitting in uh, the movie I saw last night. I won't spoil it though. I won't say what it was again. In case you watch it. No spoilers. <laughs> it's a cool piece. That's Joe too. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, the texture he's throwing on stuff really actually looks neat. It could be a Photoshop filter though, now that I'm thinking about it. Or he might have created a filter, but it, yeah, it might be like uh, one of the fabric sort of uh, filter tools. Works good though. Looks good. It's nice. Oh, and that's it. All right. Have a great one. I got to get back to work. Um, but uh, yeah, I want to be safe out there and uh, read your comic books. And if not, then watch the videos and uh, check out my Patreon. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.